The novel is, it's an eating machine. It's been from the very beginning a, this device that can take in all other forms and incorporate them into itself. It can incorporate you know, poetry, journalism. Trump Sky Alpha, the rigid airship that docked on the roof of the White House and the roof of Trump Tower, a thousand foot vessel from the bridge of which Trump delivered streaming YouTube addresses every Wednesday, DC to New York, and every Sunday, New York to DC, the ultra luxury Zeppelin Crystal Palace of the sky on which the 224 seats, luxury berths in an open loge style, went for a starting price of $50,000, a figure that jumped with the addition of various ultra deluxe packages and enhancements, diamond and diamond troika elite tiers, four figures for the 10 star double platinum seafood, certified eight pound lobsters with Trump embossed on tail fin and right claw. Tell me about the voice. I mean, how are you, you, you seem to inhabit Trump very well. I mean, it, it almost sounds like reading a collection of his tweets. Trump is a really interesting figure to work with as a writer because he's so, he's so exaggerated. He's so over the top. It's, it's a challenge you know, to keep up with him, but then you have to really figure out, you know, what is the essence of Trump? How do you nail that voice? And in the case of this story, the excerpt I read, how do you take the type of, you know, grifting, the nonstop lies, the self-enrichment, and turn them into, you know, narrative? And in some ways, the narrative should capture, I think, but also needs to outstrip reality, but that's a it's tough because Trump is always doing something worse than you imagine. Yeah, it's hard to outstrip him. Yeah, he keeps you know the goalposts of the just you know, the awfulness of this man keep getting adjusted. I was going to ask you where where you're from. Where are you from? I'm from Minnesota. I'm from suburban Minnesota. So does do you feel like being from Minnesota does that come into your work at all? Or? So you're from. Have you heard the term Minnesota nice? Okay, so Minnesota nice is a term for a kind of. There's a general you know, friendliness in the state of Minnesota that you're greeted with, which has a quite a different feeling than New York. But the underside of it is that a lot of people don't say what's on their mind and there might be a lot of repressed anger and, yeah. and, and a lot of feelings. And I think definitely the, the dynamic between feelings that are very much, you know, under the surface and then these sudden volcanic eruptions mm -hmm. of feeling appear in in my work, there's a lot of people who seem very controlled, looking at things in a very positive way, and then there'll be a, a shift and it will get much darker. Yeah, something much bleaker right under the surface. Yeah, a lot of these people are very optimistic mm -hmm. and they're almost fooling themselves in their optimism because ultimately they're full of these dark forces and rage. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing is I, I do most of my writing between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. That's how I make things work. I've always written at night and it's what makes things work with my day job as a yeah. as an editor. And I think that time of night, that midnight time is one that lends itself to ranty, you know, riff based materials, dark yeah. materials. So if, if I didn't have a day job in publishing, I might be writing much sunnier Sunny, novels. Optimistic, you know, tales of joy. But uh, yeah, but I've got the midnight thoughts. Well, thanks for thanks for coming in, Mark. This okay, is really thanks fun. a lot, Liz. Yeah, and congratulations again. Thank you so much. Yeah.